Okay, so in this next video on the exponential distribution, we're going to calculate the variance of the exponential distribution. And uh, similar to in the case of uh, the, expect, uh, the expected value of the exponential distribution, we note that because uh, if y is distributed exponentially with parameter lambda, uh, oh dear, expo, and the reason you have to put that O there is because if you just put exp, uh, lambda, it might uh, that might be mistaken uh, for um, the actual function. You might mean uh, some people write exp lambda to mean uh, e to the lambda, so they write it out exp lambda rather than just writing e to lambda. So it might be mistaken that you're just taking uh, that you're just thinking about the function, uh, which are the the exponential function. So you should put expo lambda. Uh, but anyway, because y is uh, if y is exponentially distributed with parameter lambda, i.e., it's a general exponential distribution, uh, then y is actually equal to x divided by lambda if x is uh, a random variable uh, which is exponentially distributed with parameter 1, i.e. the standard exponential distribution. Uh, then we can just apply properties of variance that we um, uh, that we saw earlier in earlier videos. We know that the variance of y is equal to uh, the, well, it's going to be definitely equal to the variance of x divided by lambda, and then we can pull out the lambda. And when we do that, we get we don't get one over lambda, but we get one over lambda squared times the variance of x. So in fact, all we need to do is work out the variance uh, of a standard exponential distribution. Okay, so let's say if x is exponentially distributed with parameter one, uh, then the variance of x we know is equal to the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x squared. Okay, uh, so we know that the expected value of x is equal to 1, so we have this bit. Uh, what we need to compute is the expected value of x squared. So we apply the law of the unconscious statistician to say that this is the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x squared uh, times uh, the PDF of the standard exponential distribution. Now the PDF of the standard exponential distribution is 0 on the interval, so if I just write this out, f of x is equal to uh, 0 if x is an element of uh, the uh, n the negative or the, well, the non-positive uh, real numbers, so negative infinity uh, all the way up to 0, and we know that it's equal to uh, lambda e to, the, well, no, this is the standard exponential distribution, so we know that it's equal to e to the negative x uh, if x is an element of, um, well, uh, 0, but not including 0, to plus infinity, so any positive real number. Okay, so uh, we can split this into two integrals. We can split it into the integral from negative infinity to zero uh, plus the integral from zero to plus a positive infinity. And on the interval between negative infinity and zero, little f of x is identically equal to zero. So that entire integral is just integrating zero. Uh, so uh, that integral is going to be zero. So it turns out that this is equal to the integral between zero and infinity of x squared. And uh, now the PDF on zero to infinity is equal to e to the negative x. Don't worry about the fact that at to zero, the PDF isn't equal to e to the negative x. That doesn't make any difference. And then we can integrate this dx. Uh, so now what we need to do is compute that integral to work out the expected value of x squared. So let's get another piece of paper and uh, do just that. OK, in fact, let's get rid of that. Um, so uh, we're after uh, the integral from 0 to infinity of x squared e to the negative x uh, dx. OK, uh, so uh, integration by parts again. Uh, so uh, a recap again of the integration by parts formula. It says that the integral between a and b of f of x uh, g prime of x uh, dx is equal to f of b uh, g of b minus f of a g of a uh, pl uh, minus rather the integral between a and b of f prime of x g of x uh, dx. So we are going to let f uh, be our um, we're going to let f be our x squared here, so we'll let that be our x squared, and we're going to let e to the negative x be our g prime. Uh, so if we compute, if we do this process, uh, we get that the integral between zero and infinity of, and of course, um, our a is equal to zero and our b is equal to uh, infinity. Okay, so uh, the integral between zero and infinity of x squared e to the negative x uh, dx uh, is equal to f of b g of b. Well, f of b is just going to be x squared evaluated at infinity. Of course, we can't evaluate it at infinity, so we need to take the limit as n approaches infinity of uh, n squared 
times uh, g of b. Now the uh, antiderivative of g prime uh, the anti is the antiderivative of e to the negative x, uh, which is negative e to the negative, and we need to evaluate it at n and take the, that limit. Okay, and then we get minus f of a g of a. Now a is just equal to zero, uh, so f of zero is zero squared, and g the antiderivative of g uh, g prime rather is equal to negative e to the negative, and then we're evaluating it at zero. Zero. Uh, so this is just zero, and uh, well, actually, let's just complete the um, f uh, the equation to make it true. Uh, minus the integral from zero to infinity, f prime is equal to two x, and then uh, the antiderivative of e to the negative x is negative e to the negative x uh, dx. Okay, so there we go. We've done. We've applied the integration by parts uh, process here. Uh, this limit, you're going to have to believe me on this one. This is equal to zero. Uh, basically, uh, the e to the negative n shrinks much, much faster than the n squared grows. So it dominates and makes this converge on zero overall. Uh, and this obviously is zero as well because it's zero times one. Uh, so this is just going to be equal to this integral. Now we'll pull this negative out the front to get rid of this negative here. And we'll get that this is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of 2x e to the negative x dx, which is equal to 2, uh, the integral from zero to infinity of x e to the negative x dx. Now that is an integral we had to compute in the previous video uh, when we were working out the expected value. In fact, this is exactly the expected value of the standard exponential distribution. It's x times uh, the PDF on zero to infinity. And of course, uh, of course, the expected value is really this plus the integral from negative infinity to zero of x times the PDF. Uh, but on that uh, interval, the PDF is identically zero. So that integral is totally zero. So this is in fact equal to the expected value of x. So we get that this is equal to two times the expected value of x. Now the expected value of x we know is one. So we get that it's equal to two. Uh, so we now know that the expected value of x squared, uh, where x is a standard exponential distribution, so I'll just write that down, x is distributed expo uh, 1, uh, and we will get that the variance of x is therefore equal to, by um, definition, it's equal to e to the x squared minus e of x squared. And e of, x square, e of x is equal to 1, so e of x squared is 1 squared, which is still 1. So we get that this is equal to 2 minus 1 squared, which is just equal to 1. Now, uh, remember that the standard, uh, the general uh, exponential distribution, y, which is distributed exponential with uh, parameter lambda, uh, is uh, could be written as y is equal to this uh, normal, uh, uh, the standard exponential distribution divided by lambda. Okay, uh, so uh, we can say that the variance of y is equal to uh, the variance of x divided by lambda squared. So it's equal to 1 over lambda squared. So the variance of a general exponential distribution uh, is uh, 1 over lambda squared. Okay, uh, so uh, the final thing I want to say is that you could uh, you could have worked out e e of x square e of y squared rather you could have worked out the variance of y uh, directly by saying it's equal to e of y squared minus e of y squared. And if you wanted to calculate e of y squared, the way you would do that is you'd say that it was equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of uh, let's say we'll keep the same variable e x squared and then times the PDF of y, so let's put little, uh, little f of big Y of x uh, dx, and uh, little f of y of x is equal to uh, 0 if um, x is an element of um, negative infinity to 0, and including 0, and it's equal to lambda e to the negative lambda x, uh, if x is an element of the positive number, so uh, 0 to plus infinity. Okay, uh, so we could work this out directly. So um, if we want to work out e of y squared, then we need to evaluate this integral. It, we can split it into the integral from negative infinity to 0 of this, plus the integral from 0 to infinity of this. And of course, uh, for the integral from negative infinity to 0, the PDF is identically 0, so the whole integral is equal to 0, because you're just integrating 0. So this becomes the integral from 0 to infinity of x squared, and then we'll stick this in lambda e to the negative lambda of x um, uh, dx. 
And then basically we can do a substitution in the same way as we did previously. And we can say let uh, u equal lambda of x and uh, then uh, du is going to be equal to lambda dx and uh, the limits are going to remain the same because if x is equal to 0, u is equal to 0 and if x is equal to infinity, then u is equal to infinity so this becomes the integral from 0 to infinity now what we'll do is we will uh, multiply by lambda and then divide by lambda and the reason that's clever is if we pull that lambda out the front this is just equal to u squared and then we get e to the negative u uh, and then we get uh, replace dx with du over lambda so overall there, what we get is um, equal to 1 over lambda squared of the integral from 0 to infinity, u squared e to the negative u, du. But that is the exact integral we had to compute to work out the expected value of the x squared, where x was standard exponential distribution. So we'll get 1 over lambda squared, the expected value of x squared. Okay, uh, And the expected value of x squared was, we remember, 2. And then if we just finish this calculation now, uh, we'll get that the uh, variance of the general uh, exponential distribution is equal to the expected value of y squared, uh, which is equal to uh, 2 divided by lambda squared, minus the expected value of y, all of that squared. Now the expected value of y was equal to 1 over lambda, so we'll get 1 over lambda squared, which means that overall we get 2 over lambda squared minus 1 over lambda squared, which is just 1 over lambda squared. So indeed, we do get the same result for the variance of a general exponential distribution if we uh, compute it uh, directly rather than uh, relying on the fact that it is just uh, the uh, random variable uh, that is standard, normally dis uh, standard exponentially distributed uh, divided by uh, the parameter lambda.